Yeah, Ryan, you're exactly right. In our culture, we are kind of moving away from anxiety inducing stimuli, whether it's politically, whether it's relationally, whether it's academically. And, and what's interesting about that is the more I avoid uh, anxiety inducing stimuli, the lower my threshold tolerance for anxiety becomes. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing kind of this, I think what I've called it with, with some of my, my clients is RDD, resiliency deficiency disorder. I mean, it seems as if, and listen, this isn't to say, this is in no way, shape or form to suggest that people aren't going sure. through very, very serious things that are incredibly damaging to our psyche and our emotional well-being. But there is also this, where we're seeing some of um, this, this lack of resiliency where relatively minor things are, are causing severe emotional dysregulation in our clients. Yeah, well, you're exactly right. What, what we're training our clinicians to do in the community mental health counseling program here at, at CCU is lead our clients through their life stories. And, and we're asking clients to highlight those moments that were especially painful. And as clients are highlighting those moments in session, um, our clinicians are trained to help clients learn affect regulation skills, grounding techniques, mindfulness techniques, um, breathing techniques, all, all things that are well documented in the literature to help clients overcome unwanted feelings of sadness or, or fearfulness or anxiety. And, and what that does, and you're using the right language, it promotes a resiliency in our clients that equips them to handle life on life on life's terms. Now, how, how, how much easier would it be if I could live life on Trent's terms, right? But the rest of the world won't abide by Trent's rules. And so we're, we're really equipping clients to deal with life as it comes at them. And the, the, the terms that came to mind as you were describing some of the current uh, infrastructure in um, anxiety tolerance in our culture are ideas like responsibility and maturity. You know, taking responsibility for how I feel, growing and developing to the point of, of being able to regulate how I'm feeling. Academically, we want to challenge students. You know, we want to provoke thinking in, in students. And that necessarily means at times creating some internal tension that students have to wrestle through. And that's just useful. It promotes maturity. Um, it promotes growth. It promotes the capacity to self-regulate, all hallmarks of optimal functioning in adults.